All right, who's ready for some fun with cooling? I've got the new Noctua NHD15, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, and the Corsair H105. Let's see how these bad boys do cooling down a Core i7-4770K with a mild 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today you can see there's a plethora of cooling going on here. I've got the new Noctua NHD15 in the house. They were nice enough to send that my way. So we're going to pit it up against the Corsair H105. We got two products that are kind of similar in price, right around the $100 price point. And then just for fun, I'm going to throw in the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo because for around 30 bucks, it's worth taking a look at how this thing does in comparison to these two much more expensive coolers as far as your investment goes for cooling down your CPU. All right, a few things to note before we get started. First off, the H105 does have a little bit of an advantage because I am using Noctua NFF12 fans mounted to the top of the case, pulling air through the radiator from inside the case and exhausting it out. So that's the way that's set up. It is going to have a slight advantage over what you would have just out of the box so that is something to keep in mind. But to try to make up for that a little bit, I am going to use the Arctic MX2 thermal paste on all three of these coolers to try to level the playing field a little bit, at least there. They all come with their own, but we're gonna try to keep things level by going with the same paste. And finally, I'm going to be using this little thermometer here to make sure that ambient temperatures stay consistent during the testing. So everything's gonna be tested when the room is 23 degrees. And that's actually the reason I'm out here because this portion of my house is actually a lot more consistent as far as temperatures are concerned because there's just more room for air to move around. And then we're gonna do three different tests. So we're gonna be testing things out at idle, rendering something in Premiere, and then finally the dreaded Prime 95 and a Haswell chip, just to see how warm we can actually get things for these coolers to really flex their muscle. All right, so first up is the Corsair H105 sitting at idle. So again, this processor is overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz. It is on adaptive voltage. So right now it's sitting right around between 800 and 1000 megahertz and it's drawing 0.72 volts. So we're at about 31 to 34. Let's just go with the maximums. So we're sitting at idle, we're looking at about 34, 36, 36, 38. So not too bad. All right, so now I'm doing a render from Adobe Premiere and I'm actually going to see where temperatures get. This is more of a realistic load test than say something like a synthetic benchmark like Prime 95. So as you can see here, the processor has ramped all the way up to 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, both CPU-Z and real temp are showing that and we're sitting around 55 on core one and going up to just shy of 60 on core two and then mid 50s on three and four. So we're at 54, 59, 57, 55 and that seems to be where everything's kind of leveling off. I'm gonna let this go, and once we get near the end of the render, then I'm gonna take note of what the maximums were during the entire render process. All right, well, the render is almost done, and we hit 61, 65, 63, and 62, and everything stayed pretty much whisper quiet. You can barely even hear, hear the computer at all, so that's pretty much where we landed there on the render test. So, and in case you, you noticed at the beginning, there is, I just have to throw this out there because it, it could play into the amount of heat being generated. The graphics card in the computer right now is actually a 650 Ti and not the 780 classified. That's off kind of on another project right now. So I've got the temporary card in here. So that will be in the entire time. So that will be consistent as well. So now let's move on to Prime 95. All right, so it's been five minutes. Now here's the scoop on Prime 95 because it does tend to bump things up a little bit higher than pretty much anything else would. So looking at CPU-Z, we are at 4.2 gigahertz and we're running at 1.26 volts. And the temperatures we hit after five minutes were 72, 75, 73, and 71. Well, all right, so now I've got the Noctua NHD15 installed, and I have to say, it looks good. Even though those fans are kind of an oddball mix with this case, it still looks good. I think it's just the, the size of it that makes it impressive. You can see that fan comes really close to the side panel of the case within millimeters of hitting the panel, actually. So this thing was uh, well engineered just by chance to fit into the H105, but it does indeed fit, even with having to be raised up a little bit. However, if you have really tall memory modules and you have to bump the fan up any further than I have it sitting, you may have a problem. All right, then looking at temperatures, everything looks really good. I have to say, very impressive here. 
uh, running at 800, between 800 and 1000 megahertz and pulling between 0.725 and 0.8 volts. It's fluctuating a little bit, but it looks like we're hitting 29, 29, 28 and 32. So these temperatures are definitely better than the H105, at least at idle. And I have to say, while the cooler is slightly audible, it's really at idle. You can barely hear it. You have to be trying to hear it to pick up on it. Now, you may hear the air conditioning running in the background right now, but I did listen to this before that kicked on. The AC is on to make sure that the ambient temperature in the room stays at 23 degrees, which is where it is at right now. Well, all right, the render is almost complete, and it looks like we're hitting 4.2, and our temperatures are 54. 59, 57, and 55 reading the maximums, hovering around the mid 50s for the most part. So again, very impressive. It is audible, you can hear the fan spinning up, but really hardly any more than you could hear them when you had the two fans mounted at the top. Now, one thing I should note, the fans at the top have changed. I took off the NFF 12s that were on the radiator and switched them out for two 140 millimeter uh, AF-140s from Corsair, and then on the actual Noctua itself, you have those two fans. So, again, uh, really impressed with how quiet it was during that render. Very, very impressive temperatures, and I have to say, for an air cooler, I'm actually quite blown away so far. So the true test is going to be how this thing stacks up in Prime 95. All right, so I've been running Prime 95 for a little over five minutes, and as you can see, temperatures are looking really good. Our maximums are at 59, 66, 62, and 62, and this is at 4.2 gigahertz and 1.26 volts steady the whole way through this test. So this is the test that's probably going to stress the cooler the most, so the fans are doing the most work out of the three things I tested, obviously. So what I'm going to do is get really close to the NHD 15 right now, probably six to eight inches away from the clear side panel of the case, which is the area that's going to allow the most sound through and get my lavalier mic right up there so you can get an idea of how this thing sounds when it's really doing some work. So as I'm sure you could hear, it's quiet. You can hear it, but it's quiet. Overall, really impressed with this. So let's move on to the Hyper 212 Evo. All right, now just for fun, it's time to test out the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, and I'm actually gonna do something a little interesting here. I'm gonna test it stock as it comes with the one fan right out of the box, and then I'm gonna take advantage of that extra bracket that comes in the box and go ahead and put on two Noctua NFF-12s. All right, so here we are at the idle screen once again. You should be familiar with this by now, about uh, 0.72 volts running anywhere between 800 to 1000 megahertz, spiking here and there for whatever unknown reason. And uh, right now we're at 800 and our maximum temps are 32, 33, 31, and 36. So let's go ahead and get a render test underway. All right, so the render is almost complete and we've been running at 4.2 gigahertz at uh, 1.211 volts, it looks like. And our maximum temperatures are 58, 64, 62, and 60. So again, really impressive here. Uh, I have some thoughts on why the air cooling is doing so well that I will share once we conclude our testing here. But uh, again, noise levels on this one are the highest. You will know that this has, has kicked on, whereas with, in this test with both the H105 and the Noctua, not so much. They were both still pretty darn quiet doing the rendering test. So again, it to be expected. It's having to push a little bit more air because there's not as much surface area to do the cooling. All right, Prime 95 has been running for about five minutes once again, and looking at the temperatures here, we are at 65, 71, 68, and 68 on the maximums, and cruising uh, low to mid 60s on core one, and then in the middle two cores, we're bumping up around 70-ish, depending on what's going on. Uh, again, 1.26 volts and 4.2 gigahertz. Now noise, this is by far the loudest of the three. Uh, again, the H105 and the Noctua were both pretty neck and neck as far as, as being fairly quiet actually. Now that said, this one's not loud by any means, it's just the least quiet. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before and get my microphone right up on it so you can kind of get an idea here. So yeah, still really not all that loud, and uh, given these temperatures, uh, it's pretty impressive that it's, it's not louder than it is. So let's have some fun and put some Noctua fans on this thing and just be completely impractical and put $50 worth of fans on a $30 cooler and see what we get. 
All right, here we are back at the desktop again. Now I have two NFF 12s installed in the Hyper 212 Evo. So we are between 800 and 1000 megahertz, 0.72 volts on the chip, and maximum temperatures right now are looking like 33, 34, 32, and 36. So render test time. All right, and once again, the render test is almost complete and temperatures are looking just fine. Uh, maximums of 60, 66, 63, and 61, running at 4.2 gigahertz and drawing about 1.211 volts. So uh, adding the second fan, not making a, an earth shattering difference at all. I would say it's a little bit quieter, but that's just simply because I think those Noctua fans are a little bit quieter just you know, in general, as they should be, considering that they are premium fans. All right, Prime 95. <sighs> All right, five minutes, Prime 95. If you're doing the math here, it's gotten pretty late. Temperatures, looking pretty good. Again, 1.26 volts, 4.2 gigahertz, and looks like our maximums are at 66, 72, 69, and 69. So yeah, I don't know that there's really a great benefit to go and push pull on the Hyper 212. I mean, for a 4.2 gigahertz overclock, I don't think you need to do it at all. All right, so there you go, the roundup. We had the Hyper 212 Evo with one fan, with two fans. And then, of course, we had the Noctua NHD15 in its configuration straight out of the box because, hey, there's nothing to improve there. And then finally, the H105 with two Noctua NFF12s venting air out of the case. So I'm going to put the numbers up at the end of the video in a nice graphical format so you can kind of digest all of that in one fell swoop. Uh, but all that being said, uh, interesting on the results side. Uh, I was really interested to see that Actually, the air cooling did exceptionally well, and I have to say, the Noctua NHD15 really impressed me. It stayed nice and quiet. The only thing that really got it kind of wound up was doing Prime 95, but I mean, that's to be expected. So uh, if you're thinking about going air cooling, uh, there's, there's lots of things about it that were nice. For one, uh, installation, super easy. You really, I've, I've never installed a, cool, installed a cooler that was easier to do than that. The Hyper 212 Evo is actually fairly easy, but that Noctua Man, the mounting bracket, and then the retention clip, like everything that you screw down, the, the whole process, at least on an LGA 1150, it was super, super simple. And I really appreciate that. There's so much to be said for not losing your mind and cutting your hands and getting all tore up doing an install. The performance on it was fantastic, best performing of the three, and it stayed super quiet while it was doing it the whole time. So uh, it barely fit in the case. Like I said, if the memory had been any taller, I wouldn't have been able to get the side panel on without having to move the fan to the other side, which wouldn't have been as efficient because in that one tower really wouldn't have had a whole lot of cooling on it. So, you know, it's a big cooler, so that's to be expected. And the um, H440 is not a huge case. So the fact that it still fit was nice. Just be careful about that memory. So of the roundup, I have to say, if I had to choose of the three to put in this case, I would say the, the Noctua NHD15 is the way to go. Now the H105 looks better. Aesthetically, in my opinion, the water cooling setup looks better. It's not as busy. Obviously, uh, the Noctua cooler stands out like a sore thumb. If you don't like the look of that thing, either use a case that doesn't have a side panel or just accept that it's in your face because it dominates the space inside of the window of your case. It's, there's really nothing else to focus on but that. So if you like the look of it, that's good. If you don't, uh, it might be a problem. And then of course the old Hyper 212 Evo actually did really, really well on a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. A little bit noisy, but performed well. And I have a theory on this. The H440, when you're using a radiator setup, you've got the top of the case and then you've got the metal top of the case. So you've got the, the plastic or the lid top, and then you've got the actual frame top. And the space in between there is really not very big. And then you have the foam in there as well. So airflow is pretty restricted. Well, when you're using a radiator, you're really counting on the air moving in that particular area in order to keep things cool. And I think that's why the H105 is struggling a little bit. It just wasn't getting enough air to be able to perform as well as it could. The air coolers, on the other hand, did exceptionally well because the large 140 millimeter fan on the back is venting air out of the case. And the way the air coolers were set up, the air was coming in, going straight out, right out the back. And in the case of the Noctua, actually, it was forcing air on two fans in the same direction and then right out the back of the case. So I think that's why that performed so well. 
There was nothing holding up the airflow on, on those tower coolers. Everything was getting right out. All the heat was getting right out and things were able to just keep cycling. With the H105, I think it was a little more of a struggle, especially because I was pulling air out of the case. It was blowing it up on the top of the case and then it was just like, poof, had nowhere to go. It got a little bit trapped in there. That's my theory at least. So with other cases, I think it may, you know, the, the, the battle may be neck and neck. But uh, again, I. Really, I can't, uh, if you're thinking about it going air cooling, you're not going to be sorry. If you, if you can fit it in your case and you're okay with how it looks, the NHD15 is one heck of a CPU cooler. All right, this was a long one, swapping out those three coolers and then running all those tests. So if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. And if you want to see more of the cooler up close, be sure to check out my overview of the NHD15, which you can click somewhere on the screen right now to be taken there. You can also click down in the description too if that's just too much work for you. That's too crazy. But you know what? You know the drill. As always, don't be a stranger. Check back soon.